and then there's a highway, unfortunately it's not paved, but you can come out this way, and a series of dikes here, they actually had to cut tunnels through those dikes. Hmm. So you can actually drive through them. So in the colored picture, are all the uh, lines dikes? Yeah, all this stuff is dikes. All this is the whole entire radial dike system here. And, all that. and the road actually goes up like this, and you can drive, actually drive past the whole bunch of Really quite neat. Another field trip someday. <laughs> Put that on your bucket list. Okay. All right, now, cinder, oh, splatter. That should be spattered. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so spatter cones. Center cones and spatter cones basically differ only in the, I guess, the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the big difference, I guess, if you can think about it, is you can think of a center cone basically is the collection of loose material that falls down right next to the vent. Okay, now the key there is when the material falls down and hits the ground, it's already solidified. So you end up with this cone that's just the accumulation of very loose material. Okay, commonly these are basaltic and commonly very small vents, very small amount of eruptions, okay. So most of these uh, cinder cones are no more than a couple hundred meters high, so relatively small compared to those volcanoes. Okay, now quite often the slopes of a cinder cone will form at what's called the angle of repose. Do you know what that is? Right, that's right. So they're all loose material. It's like going down to the beach and building a little cone out of sand. You can only build it so steep because if you build it beyond that, it's not going to support itself. It's going to want to collapse, okay? And that's essentially what happened here because all this is just loose material. Now, the difference between, again, I'm saying different, sometimes it's the eye of the beholder. The difference is, is in a spatter cone, quite often the material is still molten when it hits the ground. So you get a, a little bit more welding that goes on there. So sometimes you can build something that's a little bit steeper than the angle of the post. Okay. Here's a picture. This is in Big Pine, California. So this is in the southern end of the Golden Valley. Again, this is part of the Basin Range province. And remember, the Basin Range, that's where this earth is actually North America splitting apart there. So sometimes you would get to open up little fissures there that basically the asthenosphere comes up and erupts. Okay, and that's what you see here. Here's a great picture from Kaplan National Monument in Mexico. Okay. Um, that's actually no more than about an hour's drive from Dalhart, Texas. So it's right as you cross out of Texas into New Mexico. Right there. So that's an easy thing to drive. Okay. Um, but what's interesting about this is you can literally drive to the top of this thing. But you can see here's the visitor center. Again, the National Monument, so it's run by the National Park Service. There's the visitor center, there's the road. And notice the road goes to the top, goes around the back side. And it ends up at a little parking lot right there. Oh my god. And then once you get to the parking lot, of course, there's another little, uh, little kind of museum display thing there. And there's a trail that you can actually walk all the way around the top of the volcano. Oh my gosh. And then there's a trail on the back side. Here over here, you can actually walk down into the crater. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting place. Captain National Park. Okay. Neat place. Again, about an hour, about a day's drive from there. An hour or a day? A day. <laughs> a day and an hour. Okay. Day and an hour, close okay. enough. All right. Okay, so that's the spatter cone. And again, like I mentioned, sometimes it's, the difference is simply speculative. It's kind of the eye of the beholder. And again, as I mentioned, the difference is it's quite often in, in spatter cones. The material is still relatively molten when it hits the ground. So it does do a better job of welding than you would in a typical center cone. Okay, so sometimes you can see on this one like the slopes are a bit steeper. Okay, this is nobody's ever been to Albuquerque. <laughs> right on the nope. southern end of the city limits of Albuquerque, there's a whole series of these. Mm. Okay, part of the Rio Grande River. Okay. Um, so again, the idea. Okay. 
So the other one is called a ruffled cone, and the only difference between a scatter cone and a ruffled cone is the fact that you have steeper uh, sides on the top part. Mm -hmm. So it's showing you a little bit higher degree of welding here. Okay, any questions about that? Again, the, the differences are somewhat uh, obscure, I guess. Okay. All right, the next one are shield volcanoes. And these are by far the largest geomorphic objects <coughs> on the Earth. And in fact, they are the largest geomorphic objects in the solar system. Mm. Okay. Um, so again, it gets the name shield because it, it comes from Iceland where there's some, these are, these are the ones from Hawaii, which are really big. Um, there are shield volcanoes in Iceland where the name originated okay, a little bit smaller because it looks like if you take one of the Germanic shields like they use in battle and turn it upside down, that's what it looks like. That's what okay, so these are just the accumulations of many, 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 many lava flows over a significant period of time. Now, the reason it forms that sort of broad shield, not very high, but very wide, is the fact that it's typically these are basaltic lava, and these commonly these uh, shields basically the should say that the basaltic lava has a relatively low viscosity. Okay, so the lava is going to flow very easily over long distances. Okay, so it forms basically outward instead of upward. Okay, the eruptive style is Hawaiian for the most part, very effusive. Very gentle slopes, somewhere between two, two degrees typically is along the margins, and you don't get these really steep ones until you get very close to the top. Now, many of these, if not most of them, also have a central caldera associated with them. Okay. Uh, and again, this is where we find them. And we'll talk about those here, and you'll find them in the room. I'm going to show you another one that's up there in that same Kaplan area. Okay. So you can actually drop up there and see it. Okay, any questions about that? Now, interesting is this is Mauna Loa. Okay. Uh, see over here is Mauna Kea. So what I'm standing here is the saddle in between those two volcanoes. Okay. Uh, this is a training area called Pahakaloa. This is a Marine Corps training area. And you can walk from Pahakaloa to the top of this thing. This thing is almost 14,000 feet Whew. below sea level. But Mauna Loa is by far the largest mountain on the surface of the earth. How high is Mount Everest? Um, is it close to like 30,000? Almost, yeah. It's 29 mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Okay, 29,000 feet. This thing is only 14,000 feet above sea level, but if you include everything from the bottom of the ocean to the top, it's almost 60,000, 56,000 feet, almost 60,000 feet. Whew. So it is by far the largest mountain. Show you in a minute, it is so big that it actually warps the crust. Okay, now, the largest mountain in the solar system is Olympus Mons on the uh, planet of Mars. Mm -hmm. And it is almost 90,000 feet high. Oh my God. It's huge. <laughs> and it's also shield mode. Okay. okay. All right, typical of these, basically, the, these result from, again, we mentioned these are from mantle plume emergence, okay, that formed uh, all of the Hawaiian Islands, and each one of the islands was formed as the Pacific crust, or the Pacific plate moved over the plume, okay? Again, these were, these, these basically are just a series of Pahoe Hoi and minor amounts of Aha uh, lava flows that built these heavens to 13,000 plus feet, feet plus sea level. And these eruptions occur about every 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. okay, the last time, I think Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa hasn't erupted in probably several hundred years, but Mauna Kea, I think, erupted the last time in about, <clears throat> I think it was the late 1800s. Okay, now, obviously Hawaii is still active, as we know from this summer. Um, actually, Kilauea is one of the other volcanoes that's on the side of these shield volcanoes. It's been continuously erupting since 1983. It has never stopped. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so again, it's located on one of the rift zones between the two volcanoes. There's a lot of the training area in the saddle. And 
the red zone for uh, Kilauea is over on this side here. Here's the lava flows. Now, interesting also is simply because when the lava goes into the ocean water, it also creates a lot of this halo class type, as we mentioned before, from the salting plateaus. This stuff basically builds up into incredibly unstable. Okay, it's just simply broken glass. Um, so there's many, many, lots of evidence for past uh, slope failures in Hawaii. In fact, some of the largest landslides known from past geologic events has, have occurred in the Hawaiian Islands. And, and those, some of those have created tsunamis. Of the landslide in the ocean. So, okay. Okay. Any questions that need to be Okay, now, as I mentioned, this is a sort of a diagram that shows you that. Here's basically the Hawaiian Islands, and here's the big island where Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea are the shield volcanoes today. And notice that the lithosphere is actually warped down because of the tremendous weight that's been built up on top there. Okay. So the material in here in, uh, in Mauna Loa is about 100 times the material that was in Mount St. Helen. It actually creates an 800 meter, meter deep moat around the island. Okay, so out here on this end of the island, the lithosphere basically dipped out like this, and it creates the, the appearance of a moat, so marine moat around, around the island. Okay, it's still sinking at a rate of about 2.5 millimeters per year. Okay, now, Mauna Loa has a central caldera that's quite large, 180 meters deep, sits by about two kilometers up the diameter. Mauna Kea lacks a caldera, but most people think that the reason it lacks a caldera is the fact that there was one there at one time and now it's been covered over by recent eruptions. Okay. In fact, you can walk to the top of Mauna Loa and there is a lake on the top of it in the caldera that is frozen year round. Mm. It's a tiny up Actually, there's snow up there most of the time year round as well. Okay, any questions? Okay, the Icelandic shield volcanoes tend to be much smaller. Uh, so generally, they're less than about 100 meters high. Um, again, they were built much more rapidly than the Hawaiian volcanoes. Uh, and some typically, these things will build, uh, people believe that some of these were built in a single eruptive episode that lasted no more than about 10 years. Hmm. The Hawaiian Islands, those eruptions basically messed probably a, at least a million years it took to build those. Okay, so very rapid. Uh, they generally have, again, like I said, sort of these sort of very little slopes, again, representing uh, that very low viscosity of soft lava. Um, and again, resulted from rifting in the steam sphere fell off. Everybody should recognize the fact that Iceland is unique for two reasons. One, it sits on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. You know that? Iceland. So you can actually go and stand on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge when you go to Iceland. So that's the surface ex exposure of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So there's volcanism for that reason there. The plates are pulling apart the right there. It also, at the same time, sits on top of the plate. So the shield volcanoes basically are being, being built two ways, from lava that's being erupted as part of the plume, and also lava that's being basically erupted because of the plate spreading apart, just like it is in the ocean bridge. Okay. So Iceland is very, very active. Okay. Questions? Okay. Here's one right here. These are some of the other places you find them. New Zealand and the Cascades. Um, although there's some question about this one. This is the Newberry Volcano in uh, Northern California. Um, this one has been classified as a shield volcano. And notice in this case, there's been lots of uh, collapse. In that thing, lots of slow failure. Um, some people say, no, it's not a shield volcano. So some question about that. Here's one. This is in near Capitol, as we talked about before. So that's just across the border from Texas. So this is about a half an hour drive from Dalhart, Texas. Easily reached within a day. 
<laughs> okay? This is called concept branding or Sierra branding. Sorry, there's another one up there called concept branding. This is Sierra branding. And what you should notice that this picture was taken by me standing in the center of the highway like a total idiot. Oh my gosh, Dr. Gray. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Kaplan, as we mentioned before, that whole center town, is kind of back over here. Okay, this is part of the Rio Grande Rift and the Jemez Lenement. Okay, um, so we actually believe that, Texas, that actually the Rio Grande Rift actually extends down into western Texas. It actually goes right down through the center of the city of Albuquerque and extends up into Tahoe's is also sitting on the Rio Grande River. Mm -hmm. Tavos, New Mexico, the big ski resort up here in Tavos. Mm -hmm. It extends down there. In fact, it's called the Rio Grande River. Simply so because up there in Tavos, there's a huge canyon that was formed by the river, and that's where the Rio Grande River starts, and it follows through that big steep canyon. Mm -hmm. okay. sure. And it goes down through the center of uh, Alpha. So it's essentially another place where the Western North America is starting to split apart. Okay. And the Jemez liniment is an offshoot of that. So the Rio Grande Rift sets like this, and then the Jemez liniment sort of goes on and it's up toward the north, east corner of Mexico. Okay, so capital and the volcanic eruption there as well, show up now, are part of that liniment. Okay, questions? Yep. Okay, composite volcanoes, sometimes called stratovolcanoes, um, are called stratovolcanoes or composite volcanoes simply because they're more complex. Uh, in the sense that they have a very complex eruptive history and the material that formed them is a combination of both lava flows, pyroclastic falls, and pyroclastic disic current deposits. So these edifices basically are built over time Okay, through multiple eruptions. And so one eruption may be predominantly an eruptive column that collapses to produce a pyroclastic density current. Some eruptions may be just simply lava flows, or it may be just more material that was being collected from the asphalt deposits. Okay, so that's where the term composite or stratovolcano because it has this very complex stratigraphy from the combination of all these. Okay, now what holds it all together is notice that this thing typically things are fractured, okay, as more magma pushes up, of course, it's going to deform and fracture that volcanic edifice, so the magma intrudes up and forms little dikes. So the dikes form the framework, if you will, sort of like having a skyscraper with steel girders inside that hold it all together, all this loose material. Okay, uh, again, eruptions generally from a, from a central field. Now, did that recognize Mount Fuji? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mount Fuji is famous because it's so symmetrical. And that's typical of most of these stratovolcanoes. They're quite symmetrical. Okay. Now, we'll show you some pictures here in a minute that some of them don't look quite symmetrical simply because the, they become unstable and they've got collapse and landslides. Okay, any questions about composite volcanoes or stratovolcanoes? For like the composite volcanoes, uh -huh. is When it gets, the edifice gets eroded, will it get eroded where it's kind of like a tree shape with branches and you see the magma? Um, no, simply because it's going to collapse. Um, okay, typically. Um, Although not always. I mean, it's possible you could preserve some of the things. That, that would be pretty cool. Because it loses its support. <laughs> Just a giant tree of rock. Okay, so here's a, again, just kind of more, this was Mount Hood in Oregon, Southern Oregon. And notice that it, it is a um, stratovolcano, but it doesn't look quite so symmetrical. And the reason for that is the entire front half of the mountain now is gone. Not from a volcanic eruption, it simply is a landslide and a collapse. So it became, over time it became unstable and collapsed. Okay, here's an interesting one. This is Mount Shasta in Northern California. Notice that it has two volcanic edifices. And people believe that that represents plugging. One of the vents became plugged for whatever reason, and so it started to build another edifice right next to it. 
These are the volcanic settings or the sort of the tectonic settings where you find these obviously in subduction zones, as we've seen already with all the cascade volcanoes, those are all strata volcanoes. That's a subduction zone where the Carlon plate, all uh, right, so I guess today it's the one, the Fuca plate that's subducting underneath North America up there. And then obviously out there in Mount Fuji in Japan, that's also a subduction zone. That's the entire island arc of Japan is the cause of subduction. Okay, we do find them in back arc or back arc. Rifts. Why do you get a back arc rift behind a volcanic arc? Mm. Okay, so we have a plate, we have basically the ocean subducting underneath the continent. As it subducts, it creates a volcanic arc here, like the Cascades is a good example. But why do you get a back arc rift? Why does it start to rift back here? You see lots of examples of that. It comes from this phenomenon called plate rollback. As, it, as the plates continue to subduct, of course, when they go down, because they are densifying as they go down, anamorphic change, we go through this eclogization. Remember from the petrology of mm -hmm. So that creating very high density minerals as it pressure increases as it goes down. So it's increasing its density. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the increase of the density continues to pull the plate down, and what can happen is it tends to roll the plate back away from the subduction zone, mm -hmm. like this. Right? It rolls it back away from the subduction zone. Now, obviously we can't have a big gap here, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is then the plate, the upper plate then, starts to extend forward to fill that gap as the plate, as the subducting plate starts to roll back. And what happens is you end up with a tension crack and you roll back here. So you get a, you get a rift. And when that happens, then you can get volcanism in current here as well. Okay. Right. And then, of course, the hydro rifts, though. These are obviously less common. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of these composite volcanoes are typically andesitic to dacitic in composition. Uh, occasionally you'll see basaltic ones, but they're not very common. Uh, and again, some contain a caldera, but again, most of what you will see is what's called an explosive crater. What's the difference between a crater and a caldera? Both of which are depressions, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, no, it's not related to a glacier. Glaciers come later. Um, they come much later. The caldera, it, it's collapsed in, okay. whereas the explosion, the entire top has just been kind of blown off. Right, okay. So it creates a depression because the explosion expels the material. So you end with this depression that's called a crater. Okay, whereas a caldera is a collapse feature. So mm -hmm. instead of blowing the material out, it actually pushes it, or I guess allows it to collapse down. Okay, so it's basic difference. We'll talk about that later on the crater Okay. All right. Now, quite often some of these will start to grow domes. So, in fact, now this is when you see Mount St. Helens here. Notice it's starting to grow a dome. This is not here today, but immediately after the 1980 eruption, it grew a dome in the center. Mm -hmm. and eventually that collapsed. Okay, questions about that? Okay, this just kind of gives you a relative comparison of the size of these different styles of, of uh, volcanic edit. So they're obviously very mono, uh, uh, mono in Hawaii, really, really large. Here's Kilimanjaro. This is also a shield volcano. Uh, here's uh, strato volcanoes. Here's Fuji. I guess, again, I point out that Fuji is really known because it's so symmetrical. Uh, it's the one everybody likes to take pictures of. Here's a small stratovolcano, Vesuvius, and another big center cone. Very large center cone, and the sunset crater that's out there. Uh, more than the black star. Okay. All right, any questions about this? Nope. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there today because I've got to run. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's that.